Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Hi. Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with Brandon, Brandon and Sadia. S- Sadia, <laughs> it's me. It's me. Sadia, what are you doing here? Clearly, Where's my cousin? Your cousin is gone. It's me now. Clearly, Wait, are you Brandon's I'm, cousin? I'm replacing Sam. That's what I'm doing. So that's your cousin now. I don't know if I can do this. I'm your cousin. No, this Cousins. doesn't feel right. No, this doesn't feel right. I'm your cousin now. Cousins. Cousin. We're not cousins? Oh, yeah, we're cousins. We don't look like cousins? Um, You're my cousin from my mom's side. Where's Sam? <laughs> Sam is gone. This is Sam. You, this is let, Sadia. Let's get with the program, B. You can do it. I believe in you. I do. Sam wouldn't be that supportive, so I guess that's kind of nice. It is. It is. It is nice to have somebody that's supportive. There's besides. perks that come with Sadia that you don't get with Sam. I mean, it's nice to have them together, but it's weird. It's like this is the first time where it's just the two of us plus it Sadia. So it's crazy. a new, like, trio, maybe. <sighs> you don't know how you feel about it, huh? Are, are you, like, thrown for a loop right now? Yeah, it's just... It's a lot going on. You know, on. Maddie, we just have to let him process. Okay. It's fine. Let he's taking his time. Yeah. He needs that time, clearly. He's struggling, but okay. he'll get with it. Right. It no, might take is... some time till he'll come back to us. Because we're yeah. my cousin, man. I'm your cousin, Brandon. I'm right here. <sighs> All right. It's okay. So do you know if Sam's ever gonna come back or um hopefully not. Okay. Yeah. That's cool with me. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's like, you're not my cousin, but like, that's you know, Sadia. He might, he might come back. Okay. I, I know we were like having a little conversation. How would you feel about conversation. him coming back? Um, yeah, about me pushing him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how would I feel about him coming back? Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like we could make it work. Like, yeah. Whatever. Because <laughs> like, I like your guys' dynamic. Yeah. You you know what, Maddie? We do have a great dynamic. Like, right. It's... It, our, my friendship with Sam, it, it's pretty good. I love the back and forth. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like you guys have separate villain arcs within villain arcs. So it's like you know, eh, I completely eh, agree. Like, that's how your friendship is. Like friendships are like this. This is how you guys is. Like, I feel like it's like you guys are cousins and they're siblings. Like where they just they're always bickering. That's a, that's a hot take. But there's like and love behind it. it. Cause like with cousins, it's like no, I love you. Like you're my cousin. I I don't have to deal with you enough to hate you. Yeah. So it's all love. But with siblings, it's like I hate you more. Yeah. Because I never get away from you. Yeah. But if you were to leave, I'd be like, I love you. Yeah. I miss you. That's exactly what it is. So. Like when I'm in the same room as Sam, it's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like oh when, God. but when I'm away from Sam, I'm like, well. Our times together weren't that bad. They were actually kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> Sam's great. Sam, Sam, you're great. Uh, you are. You are. And I can say that because He's not I'm here. in your spot, and you aren't here. Absolute Sam. Well, that's interesting that you describe your sibling like that. Yeah, you know. But I mean, I guess he's not like in your face. You you won't say like anything mean about him now. Well, you know, at least he's not pathetic like this person in our story. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so he's not but that's good. He's not he's pathetic. He's not pathetic. He's okay. not pathetic. He isn't. So wait, if he was in the room, would you say he's pathetic? 100%. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 100%. Mm-hmm. See, now if, I know. In the room, Sam's pathetic. Outside of the room, he's sensational. Am I the asshole for telling my brother it's pathetic that he can't do the basics of what his wife did? Yeah, you know, it was a little bit of like, oh, god. <laughs> Dang. Jeez. No, girl, that's not pathetic. That's real. A little too honest, maybe, maybe. Maybe he needed to hear that truth. Yeah. Step up, young man. Step up. Step up, young buck. Let's see what happens. It's like we got Uncle Brandon in the room now. <laughs> Step up, young buck. Step up, young blood. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my brother it's pathetic that he can't do the basics of what his wife did? I love my sister-in-law and brother. They have two kids, and my sister-in-law, Rachel, was kind of a stay-at-home mom. She worked from home part-time, but also took care of the kids and all the chores. I was over multiple times, and the house was spotless. Really, I thought she was just doing extra cleaning when she had guests, but no. When I had my kids, she showed me her schedule. She would be up at 5 for meal prepping for the whole day. Like, she never stopped, and a lot of her tips helped me with my own home. Now my brother lost his job, and it was decided that Rachel would go back to work full-time and he would stay at home the kids are in kindergarten and first grade he has this on easy mode 
I've been over to help sometimes since he just sucks at it. The house is always a mess. The kids are usually late to school. He asked me to drive them after the school talk to him. He doesn't even cook. It's just sad. He got into a huge argument with his wife since dinner wasn't done and she had to make it. He was ranting about how unfair it is and that he was trying. I told him it's pathetic that he can't do the basic of what his wife did. He has eight hours free and he can't keep the house clean. I told him that she will divorce him if he doesn't stop being lazy and figure it out. He left after calling me a jerk and my mom is now on me for what I said. There's a little baby update, but that's really it. No, absolutely not the asshole. Hold him accountable. Yeah, go ahead. 100%. Look, I firmly believe that God is a woman. Like, women are so phenomenal, so superior. I think it's, um, what's it called? What is that word called? It starts with an M. Oh, my God. Where it's like the woman, like, runs the household. Matriarchy? Is that what you're talking about? No, I don't know the opposite. You're... Patriarchy. It's patriarchy. the patriarchy that has made us believe in like that men are far superior. Brandon, I really do love you. That that men are far superior. No, no, I I truly do believe that it's women because mm. because women can run the whole world and have a baby on the hip, right? Mm-hmm. And then men they sit at work and they're stressed out and they come home and like where's my where's my where's my food. Mm-hmm. This woman, right, she had two small children. She had that house spick and span. The kids was fed on at school on time. This this guy, his task is to do what she did, and he couldn't do it. So for those men out there that are like, oh, yeah, stay at home, mom. Like, what do you, what do you guys do? You stay at home. Listen to this story. Listen to how this man is cracking under the pressure. I mean, completely just back, act like his back is. Br- he, this man, it's what it sounds like is he can't even do a quarter of what his wife has done. Mm-hmm. Um, so the sister, thank you for holding your brother, her brother accountable. Um, she's 100 percent. I don't think that she's the asshole because I think he does need to be held accountable because if your wife did it years no problem why are you struggling so hard because clearly it's not impossible it's been done time and time and time again what is it about you that you just can't get with the program yeah I think it's I think it's really sad that um a lot of the main stuff that gets like highlighted with things like this is the fact that men can't even like raise their kids to a certain extent or Mm. they you know do the household chores i'm sure there are plenty of men out there that are even listening to this where they're like hey me and my wife you know some days it's 60 40 some days it's 70 30 but we are here together Mm -hmm. it's a team we're partnership or me and my husband you know whatever um but yeah this guy it doesn't even sound like he has done been able to do anything because he doesn't cook he doesn't have a part-time job like she did he doesn't clean the house and he gets his kids to school late so my question is, you said he can do 25%. I don't even think he did any of it. Yeah. So I don't know if like, like whatever he's going through, but the fact that his kids are consistently being late for work or for work, I mean, for, for work. their Clock work. Clock it in. They're like, oh, I got my nine to five. <laughs> um, Homework was hard last night. <laughs> woo, back at it again. <laughs> Recess got me right. I'm feeling <laughs> Slow. Had to hit the gym. gym. Had to hit the gym. That's my nine to five. <laughs> now let me go do my five to nine with my dad and take care of him. No real. But yeah, I don't know. I I don't think she's the asshole for setting her brother straight because she's like, I love my sister in law, yeah. and you're not stepping up and doing the things that you know you need to do. Yeah. She was doing maybe four hours less of what you do a week, and she's sounds like raising the kids. I think that just sounds so horrible and unfair where she's doing all the cooking and all the cleaning because, like you said. That is so much to do. That's so, so the fact much. that it's on one person's shoulders all the time and all he was doing was working, it sounds like, is just like, ugh. So, it, so, is he, st- okay, so is he staying at home? He doesn't cook, so he's staying at home all day. Yes. He doesn't clean the house. He doesn't cook. So her wife, his wife has the full-time job and then comes home and cooks for everybody? Well, they got in a fight because she had to cook, yeah, because he didn't cook anything. So it must have happened enough where she was like, okay, I'm going to yell at you now because, but anyway, what do you want to, what do you have to say, Brandon? Um, 
being a man in this. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's not. She's not. I feel like I saw this TikTok where it was like one of those like hard truths of marriage, and it's like you have to accept that either side of the either side of a relationship at any point can be a uneven mm-hmm. percentage. But it's like in that moment, bro, like she's got the you got to step you have to yeah. you just have to like that's that's the only way i see it but like i remember my dad was unemployed at one point a stay-at-home dad at one point but it was like you know he had his disability like he was like uh not disability uh what is it severance oh severance yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so he would spend pretty much all day looking for new jobs but then like the thing was the way our household is is ran, like it's not like a oh you do this because yeah like we don't have like yeah I guess gender roles in a sense like my mom works more than my dad yeah my mom's got two jobs <laughs> well they both got two jobs now that's crazy but um your parents stay working I they swear. stay working <laughs> this economy is at least it, it ain't a joke <laughs> yeah <laughs> this cold basement it has got it's not so <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh. It's like my dad does more cooking than my mom. So it's like, I don't know, just hearing stuff like this or like when people deal with like these type of things, it's it's really unnatural to me just because like I've cooked. I love clean. I love vacuuming. Maddie with me. <laughs> Brandon, I love the lines. Yeah. I lo- yep. Do you ever be doing designs in it too? No, but I should start doing that. One day I made like an American flag. Oh my god! It was on the Fourth of July. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just try it. So then I just like I started in the corner of the room, and then I made like a square. And then like you know how like if you go opposite directions, yeah. I just that's what I did. I just went opposite directions. Dude, next time you do a design, send it to me. I want to see. It. <laughs> Holy crap! Design. I love vacuuming. Yeah, uh, love it. Do you like vacuuming? I do. Oh, I love it. Even yeah. the smell that you get. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so Especially creepy. when it's like a clean filter. Yes. Uh, I've recently become obsessed with it again, especially because now Ooh. we have a dog that sheds like the most I've ever seen a dog shed. But yeah, uh, B, I do agree with like the fluidity and dynamics. I mean, you have to be fluid. With, with me and my girlfriend, we honestly like, obviously there's no gender roles, but it's very much like it's give and, give and take. I would say like some days it is 60 40 and some sometimes you're just not feeling well and they pick up more of the work and same way vice versa <clears throat> but i feel like when you have a dynamic like that where you it's so much less of a mental load i feel like because if one day you're feeling like okay i'm not really feeling too hot today i really don't feel like doing xyz around the house intuitively your partner sees that and knows that and are able to pick up the slack and vice versa if something were to happen to them someday where they're not just not feeling it and you're able to pick up the slack so when it's a dynamic like that I feel like it's just so much easier because you know the things that need to get done are going to get done irregardless Mm -hmm. of whether you're going to do them or not and it's nice to like see Brandon's family I'll just say this then I'll sorry I'll let you speak yeah but it's nice to see fam- Brandon's family where they do have gender, like, more fluidity with gender roles. Like, their parents are both like, we know how to cook and we like to eat food. So we both cook whenever the other person is too busy to cook. Mm-hmm. And then especially, like, when it comes to cleaning, they're like, we both like a clean house. So whoever really gets to it first, you know, and whoever really dirtied it up the most. But <laughs> it's just also <laughs> interesting coming from a household where most of the women did all the work. Yeah. Because it's like... I'll be mad at something for Brandon because he's like, I'm like, Brandon, we can't do this in our relationship. And he's like, I don't do that. Like my dad literally, like I'll be like, Brandon, I really, I I need you to step up when it comes to like, you know, like when we live together, uh, you know, cleaning, (laughs) cleaning the kitchen, cleaning up after yourself, the bare minimum. Yeah. And he's like, and I was like, I know, I don't know if you do that or not. I'm just saying I can't deal with this anymore in my own household. I'm about to freaking freak out. And he was like, I don't do that. Yeah. Like I clean up the dishes right after I, I'm done using yeah, it. Yeah, right. Girl, don't done, even like, don't even worry about that. Like I don't even do that. <laughs> I think there's there's been a few things where like it would be like you would like bring something to me and I was just like, bro, like 
I I was genuinely confused yeah. because I, in my head I'm just like that's not how I see things yeah. going. Because uh, I'll just be like, I really need us to like share the work, the the cleaning load. Yeah, and he'll be like, Yeah, that's kind of that's I how it's gonna that's work. What we were gonna do. And Anyways? I was like, I was like, No, 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 you don't get it. Like at my house, like women do this, 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 and this, and, like, and the yeah, guys I, just like are like, I, I don't. <laughs> oh, what is what is this? Yeah, like it's the whole um, where they're purposely incompetent. The word I just said earlier, yeah. but, weaponized ignorance. Yeah, weaponized ignorance on purpose. They're like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so he was like, I, I know how to, I, that's already an expectation in my family. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder how, how soon it happened. Because yeah. if you think about, if it's like he literally just get undeployed, like two weeks later, they're like, hey, I'm going back to work. It's like, yeah. He doesn't necessarily have the skill set to do said things. Like, mm-hmm. as much as we want, everybody's relationship to be fluid or 50 50 or however you want to split the bill it it is it's just it's not always going to be like that so it's like to on his side it's like he's probably just not even equipped because it's like the kids are always late so that shows me a lack of planning ahead and the lack of you know just timely manner yeah so it's like okay the she he didn't cook dinner okay he probably is freaking out like i guess what i'm getting at here like i don't want it to be one of those conversations too where it's like oh like you completely like you're a stay-at-home parent like what are you doing because it's like that's not fair to anybody that's a stay-at-home parent but especially if it's his first time being a stay-at-home parent there's a lot of stuff that goes into that that he just probably doesn't wasn't equipped for it at that at that moment and then so Screaming and yelling, yes, because you're frustrated. But at the same time, you have to educate at mm-hmm. the end of the day because it's like, okay, don't don't see it as just incompetence. Maybe a cry for help. But also, I mean, it's enough to the point where the school's reaching out. They're like, okay, this is a consistent problem. So it's probably more than a week. Hmm. I, I, that, and he has to reach out for his sister for help. And I mean, he has eight hours within his day. After a week, if like, you know, you were be like, okay, I'm gonna go, I got to go back to work. I need you to stay home with the kids. Like, eight hours is a lot of time on my hands to be like, okay, well, we need dinner for tonight. You know, we need we gotta pick the kids up. And I feel like even still, like if it if if this had something to do with him trying to get over that learning curve, even from you know his wife's standpoint, I think that even if you know he d- forgot to make dinner or he you know didn't get the kids to school on time, I think that you're able to people are able to see effort. So if, so let's, so in a situation where, you know, I newly stay at home parent and, you know, not, you're not failing, but you aren't necessarily doing things to the standard that the mom did. If you're messing up and I see that you're trying, like, and I see you're trying to make the effort to like, okay, how do I, how do I learn how to do this? How, what do I need to do to kind of get them on time? Maybe what, what? prep do I need to do to like kind of get all of these things done the things I need to have done done if I'm seeing your effort then I don't really have unless it went on for like dragged on forever I don't really have a reason to attack you because I can see you're trying to learn you're trying to go over that get over that learning curve and that's you know failing is a part that's so that is what learning is is failing so if I I think I think it would I think it had to have festered for like a while, especially if someone outside of the home yeah. is like, dude. They said, let me come over and help what, you. What literally what is going on? Yeah. You know, because I did have a point, but if it was like for a while, but like if it wasn't for too long, I, I, I guess the only thing I would say, too, is like, I guess like men not being able to express themselves mm-hmm. emotionally or mm-hmm. like if they're over overwhelmed with something we just bottle that yeah honestly and it might even be like a thing with his pride and ego and it's like yeah. dude my wife she was able to do everything mm-hmm. and i can't do i can't do it i can't do it so i think i think it might even have something to do with pride where you're just like i, I think that's our pill to swallow like mm-hmm. if if that were me in that situation i know my ego would be hurt <laughs> 
I personally never really, I don't struggle with pride a lot. So mm-hmm. like when when people have like a pride issue, I'm like, dude, if I need help, I'm scream. I'm help me, please, please, <laughs> please help me. S O S. I'm going to sing. I don't know what's yeah. going on, but it's like, man, like that's not everybody. Yeah. Like some people will hold it in until they die, and no, that's real. That is real. So like. I think just that aspect of things, I don't know. Like, I I just don't want it to become one of those things where it's like, you know, bad situation, throw him away. He's horrible. Yeah. Because it's like, it could be worked out. It, yeah. it it genuinely could be worked out. Just a little planning ahead, a little thinking and being more thoughtful about your day. Okay, so update. I love my sister-in-law. My mom apologized to me. Rachel sent my mom what the kitchen and house looks like, the messages from the school, and apparently a text argument about how he shouldn't be doing this. She gave him two options, get his shit together or get out. Mm. I've learned a lot about the situation (laughs) and learned he wasn't even packing the kids' lunches the last two days. I think he just broke his marriage. Now, sir. (laughs) I mean, I wasn't necessarily sticking up for him, but forget everything I said in like we those last five minutes. We were trying to give you the benefit of I was the doubt. So, the I biggest was, benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah you're just, up. you're trash. And, and one thing we didn't even mention was the mom. The mom was sticking up for the son until Rachel was like, no, you don't get it. Here's here's all the information. <laughs> no, you don't get Let me lay it out for you, you in don't black get, and white so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Because you don't get it. Tammy, you don't get it? Tammy, let me show you. I know you love your son. I know you love us. But he's not stepping up. But he's not. Okay, so there's also a top comment here, and then we can get back to talking about it. Not the asshole. She works part-time and did it all. He has no job at all and can't even somewhat cut it. How the fuck were the kids late? I mean, one time can always happen, but consistently? I think being a stay-at-home parent is hard, but with both kids going to school, he should have time to do the most of it. OP responded, The kids are supposed to be dropped off at 7.30 to 8. Class is at 8.15. He has been getting them there at 8.30 most days. I don't get it. I've been late a few times, but the school has to talk to him about it. Hell, the bus is an option, but you have to wake up earlier for that. (sighs) Throw him away. I mean, he needs a factory reset. Um... Sorry to that man. Actually, no. Not sorry to that man. Get it together. I wonder. You think they're still together? Uh, This is from a few days ago. Oh. It's pretty fresh. It's fresh. So they're still figuring it out. But she's <sighs> like, you got you you don't have that much Hit time road, before. Jack. Yeah. Um, Jack needs to get it together. Hit the road. Yeah. Because it sounds like your wife and kids about to get gone. <laughs> so. <laughs> Before that, before that wife ditches you, See, like this is, they're about to do this bridesmaid. Uh, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say something uh, clever with that. Uh, 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 that was good. Uh, 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 uh. Am I the asshole for ditching my assigned bridesmaid at a wedding for one that is younger and a different race as me? Huh? Huh? One of my good friends from college was getting married call him Tom, to his wife, call her Liz, and ask me to be one of his groomsmen. I was honored. I haven't seen him in a while because I live across the country. When I arrived to a city, I was assigned a bridesmaid. Call her Kelly. Now, Kelly is a lovely woman. However, I think we were both only assigned to each other because we're both black. Liz starts telling me that we are both single and perfect for each other, but there is nothing to indicate that at all besides us being black. I should add as well that Liz has a lot more bridesmaids than Tom has groomsmen. The first night, the entire wedding party went out and it became clear that Kelly wanted to hook up. I was not into her at all, so I kindly turned her down. She then starts interrogating me as to why, and I try to give her a generic reason, but she starts listing off all of the reasons why we're so perfect together. I ended up saying that I don't do the whole short-term type thing and that we both live in completely different states, so there's no future here. She ends up cooling off, but then tells me that she respects me more for that and that I'm a stand-up guy and the type of guy that she's looking for. So it attracted her more? (laughs) What? (laughs) Yes. You told me you didn't like me. That makes me want you. That's hot. I'm a glutton for rejection. (laughs) 
During the rest of the time we were there, one of the unmatched bridesmaids, call her Jen, starts messaging me privately and we hit it off. The next day, the wedding ceremony goes well. We have the reception and me and Kelly do our entrance together and then dance together for a bit. And after a while, I go to the bar and Jen and I start to dance. And at this point, Kelly is giving me dirty looks. Oh I just Kelly, <laughs> girl, come on now. Stand up. Stand <laughs> up on your feet. I just ignore it and continue having a good time. All is going well until when I'm at the bar, Kelly and Liz confront me and start saying that me dancing with Jen is inappropriate. They start saying that she's too young for me and that it looks creepy. For your information, I am 32 and she's 24, about to turn 25. Uh, I'm like, oh, it's okay. Me and Jen are just friends. Liz at this point is angry with me and starts saying that Jen is in college, she's doing her master's, and that this is her wedding and she doesn't want to see that. And then Kelly starts saying that I must have a fetish for white women. At this point, I realize that there is no logical argument here that I can make. I tell Kelly and Liz that I really enjoyed the wedding, but that I need to go to bed early for my flight the next day. I the leave. use of the word fetish was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Wait a minute. I leave and go up to my hotel. 15 minutes later, Jen leaves early. Five minutes after Jen came up, we both get kicked out of the wedding party chat. I later find out from Tom that Kelly was crying her eyes out and that it messed up the night for Liz as well. He told me that he isn't mad at me because he told Liz from the start that Kelly isn't going to be my type, but instead Liz really wanted to set Kelly up. At this point, I feel terrible that I made it so Liz was not able to enjoy her night. As for Kelly, I just wish she got that no means no. Am I the asshole? No! No. Kelly sounds crazy. You know who Kelly sounds like? Who? Kelly sounds like Kelly from The Office. Oh, I forgot about Kelly from The Office. Crazy. Boy, crazy. Yeah, Kelly, girl. <laughs> what do you think about Kelly? He doesn't. He has, He didn't watch The Office. Yeah, no, Kelly in the, the story. This the story. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about Kelly. <laughs> not not Kelly, but you know Kelly. Kelly, yeah. So no, the Kelly. Yeah, no. This is which Kelly? The Kelly in the story. Okay. Sorry, okay, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I don't have context of Kelly in the office. Okay. Nothing. She's just like Kelly in the story, honestly. <laughs> She's on a hundred. No, she on a thousand. No, like she's on such a different level that I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like uh, I can only speak from a guy, a guy like in the dating world perspective. Like you know, when not that mm-hmm, the- from Sadia before Brandon even collected. <laughs> I, I feel like he I said, know what mm-hmm. he's saying. I know he's, what he's, gonna he's say. like, because it's like, it's like, it's just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> You got, you know, you got the you got the ones that are attractive. You got the ones that are mediocre, and then you got the friend that you're like, hey, you got a friend for my friend. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know this friend over here, yeah. he cool, he he funny. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> not funny. <laughs> Anything but, you know, but it's like, so she got, she got blind hooked up, hooked, dated this guy, and he's like. I have. I don't want any parts with you. We could just do the wedding and then be cool yeah. afterwards. But your friend Jen, I'm on that. You know, and Jen, Jen reached out, out to him. She's yeah. like, "You look funny." And really, like during wedding parties, like were you, I was uh, during were you the still uh, wedding. Were you still cooking? He's still cooking. Yeah, let Obviously. me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook. Let cook. During the wedding, I'd be dog gone if I let. Someone, mm-hmm. uh, someone else dancing affect me. Oh. Right, that's the crazy part of the story. It, I'm letting him cook. I'm just so <laughs> mad. I can't even say words right now. Like what? I get it. The, you, yeah. That doesn't affect any. Oh, if I was a husband, I'd be like, yeah, oh, just leave it alone. And then the bride <laughs> gotta worry starts about this. like comment, like chiming in on it, like, oh yeah, you're you're way older than her. She's still in college. She's in grad school. You act like she just started her first freaking semester. Like you act like she's nineteen years old. Like in grad school, what is she? How old is she? She's about to be twenty five. Twenty five, and she, I think he's thirty two. She's gonna be twenty five. She can rent a car. Like, like I'm not the biggest on age gaps, but I definitely understand that as you get older, like age yeah. gaps don't really matter. Yeah. So the fact that she's literally a, an adult, she's in her masters, um, and what she chose to talk years? to him, like. 
And he's she, 32. He's yeah. not even old. It's a bridal party. It's not like they're actually linked up together. That's who you walk down the aisle with. I mean. Well, apparently that's who she thought was the next. That, her, that her was going to be her man. Like she, she was the bouquet. strings. <laughs> the thing that I don't understand, though, is the fact that you hear the rejection and you don't like awkwardly like never talk to him again because i'd be like okay like that's cool like like you said i'm still gonna enjoy my time at this wedding i'm just gonna avoid you because even though you're really nice about it you don't like me yeah. which is fine yeah but why am i investing more time when you very clearly and very nice were like listen i think we should just be friends i'm yeah. not really i don't really like you like that i don't want to do anything you know oh kelly is really strange and then the throw the race card he's like whoa <laughs> He's like, okay, that, fetish? Okay, yeah, I totally fetish? forgot about that. That was abs- the fetish. That's infuriating. The fetish, saying a fetish is crazy. That's crazy. That is so infuriating. That is crazy. <laughs> and you know what I think about, too? She got this attached to him, and he's only seen her for, like, two days. And she's, that's no, like, 48 hours? Imagine if he, they did sleep hours. together. Are you crazy? Very much, uh, what is Are it? You a Beyonce movie? Uh, is it Obsessed? Is that what it's yeah. called? Yep. Obsessed. Hi. Ali Larder. So because this guy has like straight up rejected Kelly so bad, she shouldn't wear a bikini in front of him. Just like this next story we got to talk about. <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my friend that she shouldn't wear a bikini to the pool? <sighs> mm. like, right. him out. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I need to decompress Are after that you sentence. Are you kidding? Give me the black and mild. Let's hear it, I guess. What the, the, what's right. the deal? What? She's not she's done with today and this story really took it over. She said, I'm not I'm not kidding with you guys. What is this about? Am I the asshole for telling my friend that she shouldn't wear a bikini to the pool? My best friend was visiting me this week, and since it's the summer, we wanted to go to the pool. She has been on antidepressants for the past two years, which has made her gain a ton of weight. She used to be very slim and skinny like me, but the meds have completely changed her body composition. She bought a few bathing suits and was asking for my opinion on them. She had a one-piece and a bikini that she was deciding between. She kept saying that she looked too fat in the bikini and might wear the one-piece. I actually thought the one-piece looked better, but I didn't say anything because it was up to her. She modeled both for me and asked for my opinion. All I said was, I like the one piece better. She asked me if I thought she looked fat in the bikini and I said, no, I just like that one better. She started to act super triggered and kept accusing me of thinking she's fat and I told her to F off and wear whatever she wants. She put on the one piece and kept making snarky remarks about how I think she's fat and I would ignore her, but she kept taunting me with comments, so I just snapped and said, yeah, you shouldn't wear a bikini because it doesn't look good on you. Happy now? Is that what you wanted me to say so badly? She started to pack her bags and went somewhere else. I haven't heard from her since. I heard from our mutual friend Allie that she's safe, but she just went to a hotel and rebooked her flight. But Allie told me that apparently my friend told her that I called her fat. And Allie says that I could have handled the situation better even when I told her the real story. Am I the asshole? No. I'm- I have a big pet peeve with people that ask for, they ask a question, but they want the answer. So pick me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it's a called pick me. I don't know. I feel I, like that sounds pick me. I don't mm. know a lot of the new lingo sometimes but what are you 73 this elderly yeah. man over here oh Abdi my Hanna. god shout out to keith uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that's uh like you're asking for it like it's like they're fishing for a compliment yeah. they want you to compliment them <laughs> she i feel like the friend was genuinely like being kind about it she's like oh you know i just like i, I like the first one better like mm-hmm. and i feel like the other friend, she wanted her to say, like, oh, yeah, the bikini is what it feels like. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, she's just being truthful to you. Like, she wasn't being rude. She was like, yeah, I think I, I just like the, the one piece better. Oh, man. Imagine if she was just toxic, like, right off the gate. Like, no. <laughs> Don't wear that, Don't please. Wear <laughs> you girl from my boy. <laughs> yeah, she was being so kind about it and. I don't know. I guess the other friend perceived, oh, you want me, you think the one piece looks better, so you're calling me fat? No, I just, I'm I'm answering exactly what you asked me. You asked for my opinion. No. I feel like there's no way that she could have won <laughs> yeah. in a way, because yeah. it's like, she gave the first answer, which is what she thought. She was like, I genuinely think this one looks better on you. I'm not even like comparing your body, because what does it matter? I think this article of clothing mm-hmm. looks better on you. 
And then when her friend was fishing for a compliment, she's like, okay, yeah, the bikini doesn't look the best. Even then, she wasn't like, you're fat. She's like, it just doesn't suit you as well. Yeah. So it's like, it was a lose-lose situation for her. Because at a certain point, like, I get it. Yes, if your friends are maybe feeling down and sometimes, I don't know. They might be fishing for, yeah, you hype them up. But if it's, like, consistent where they're like, no, you're lying. Like, I kind of gain some weight. Like, I know. It's just, but I just, like, I really want to really wear the bikini. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, then wear the bikini. Literally wear the bikini. <laughs> At that point, just My opinion it. has nothing to do with what you're going to do at the end of the Literally. day. Yeah. There's only a certain amount of things that you can say before you're like, this is up to you. You have autonomy of your body. So whatever Girl, you want to wear, you can wear. Bikini on. Put that shit on. Put it on. on. <laughs> it doesn't affect me in the slightest. Girl, put that bikini on. Tell me your favorite song. Just go ahead and put it on. Top comment. Not the asshole. She knew the bikini looked terrible on her. She just wanted you to convince her it didn't. And when you refused, she pitched a fit. Her body issues are hers to deal with. Facts. So, yeah. Just spineless like this next story. That was good. He said, I had the word in my head. Is there anything else you want me to... Is there anything else you need to say? That was smooth. Give me that talk. And it's the next one. Am I the asshole for calling my daughter's father spineless and his girlfriend creepy over their name choice for their daughter? That really depends on the name. That is a very Very specific specific. title. Yes, I was thinking that too. Um, Names have been getting off the Richter scale lately, so... I'm wondering if it's something really, like, out there. Kanye West. (laughs) They named him Kanye West. But you know what? That's Northwest, when Northwest, when her name was first debuted, everybody thought, thought it, was it was crazy. crazy. But now it's, it's kind of got a little ring to it. That's just pretty that's, cool. It's kind of hard. Yeah. Northwest. Damn. Your name also really matters. Like what you name your kids. I, I'm i starting to get it because like it follows them my name life. means a beacon of light or oh, that's cute. a hill. My name means strong tower. I don't know what my name means. Lucky, fortunate, ah. triple sevens. Whoa, that Ooh. makes sense because even with your um your contact name, you know I had the purple heart, the old man, the fire truck, the fire extinguisher, the fire, because you saved somebody's life. I did. You did. That's my Spider Man. That's my Spider Man. I I love to be a part of the Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She's lucky, so she's going to get in there somehow. Because mm. I'm not going to make it out. Am I the asshole for calling my daughter's father spineless and his girlfriend creepy over their name choice for their daughter? A little bit of context for all of you. I ended up falling pregnant with my 10-year-old daughter during a drunken hookup with a friend in my mid-20s. Not the most glamorous or flattering truth, but it's the truth all the same. When we found out, we decided to keep the child and co-parent while remaining friends. We were never a couple and we didn't want to be with one another. Four years ago, he began to date his long-term girlfriend, and they moved in together last year. She fell pregnant, and I've been supportive to the both of them as much as I could be without crossing any lines. I've encouraged my daughter to help out whenever she's staying with them during the pregnancy and to behave. I've also made it clear that I want the children to have a close relationship despite having different mothers. I've even said that if they were comfortable with it on nights that I have my daughter, if they ever want alone time, I'll babysit once they have the baby so my daughter can spend time with her sibling. All in all, I thought everything was great, and I was excited for my daughter to have a sibling, as she always wanted one, but I had no interest in having another child. Three days ago, my friend and his girlfriend had a daughter. They asked me to bring my daughter to the hospital to meet her little sister yesterday alongside others of the family. So I did. I'm excited. (laughs) Another world premiere. (laughs) So I did exactly that, but then they introduced us to the baby, and I was shocked. The name they used was my daughter's name. She didn't seem. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You can't be serious. That can't was be serious. the last thing I was expecting. <sighs> Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Yeah. I was expecting the mom's name, honestly. She didn't seem to have any issue with this. My friends seemed uncomfortable and wouldn't look at me directly. I asked them what they were playing at, at which point my friend's father said he'd take my daughter down to the cafeteria to get something to eat and left with her. 
My friend told me to calm down and not overreact while his girlfriend told me she didn't see the issue and it was a pretty name. I asked them if they named the baby for my daughter, trying to understand the logic here, but his girlfriend said no, it was just a pretty name that she liked. I then asked if they planned to use a nickname or a middle name when addressing her on a daily basis and her response was that they didn't see a need for that. I told them that they were being ridiculous and that they couldn't do this. I then told his girlfriend that I found this frankly creepy and told my friend that he was being spineless if he was happy to go along with this. He tried to claim that our daughter could use a nickname or something, oh! but I shut that down immediately. Not the original. Come on now. Asking why it was more reasonable for mm. a girl who had used that name for a decade to share her name compared to a baby who had no concept of what a name was. His girlfriend told me that I was being a bitch talking to her like that after she just gave birth and asked the nurses to remove me saying that I was being disruptive. Maybe my temper is running a little too hot though and I was being harsh when she just gave birth. It's just so fucking weird. There's a there's a little bit of an edit, but yeah. That's so weird. I've That's never heard weird. of that before. And then the dad just goes along with it. You have a child with that name. Like do you does he love the firstborn? Does he care? Is he present? I no, I am perplexed, kerfuffled, bamboozled. Lost for words. I, I literally <laughs> speak to what this. Do you say? I, I've been trying to say something, but I'm like, what? what do you say? Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? And then what's crazy is they play it down so much that it's like, are you hearing yourself? The The mom, like, yeah, you're creepy for that. Like, that's creepy. The dad, though, are you kidding? You have a child. I just, I. I if they go through it with the, their nickname at their house should be Junior for her. <laughs> you know what's That'd so be hilarious. You know what's so crazy <laughs> is I, I know this family, and they, um, all of their sons are named after the dad. So they all have the exact same name. same name. Like all of the sons, they have the exact same name. Do I get it? Uh, but like, that's the only situation that I've heard something like that. But I've never heard like, I'm going to name my second daughter after my first daughter. I'm going to name my daughter the same name that your daughter is named. And is that siblings. cool if we do that? Like, And they're siblings. I think they don't plan on spending too much time with the other daughter. They yeah. can't. They can't because... At least that's the mom's plan, it sounds like. That's not functional. And then she asked him about the nickname. What's the need for that? What's the need for that? But hey, maybe the oldest daughter can have a nickname. Excuse me? That nah, she mother... got 10 years invested on this earth. Right. Your baby ain't got two seconds. My baby done put in the time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she earned her stripes. You know what I she mean? She's earned her stripes. She's like, look, the baby's already responding to, to Brittany, and the baby's like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, Brittany. She's like, Brittany. Brittany. <laughs> look here, sweetie. Brit. 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 Right here, sweetie. Baby, right here. She's, oh definitely my the, God. she's definitely a mom that snaps. Is that a color? Brittany. <laughs> Y'all see that color? I, I thought colors were fake this whole time. All I saw was darkness. <laughs> she came out she's like god dang it's bright she says, hey, Who yo. All the lights? um edit is i'd also like to state i know that what they want to name their child is their choice they could have called her dinosaur for all that i care but this one name should be off limits or adjusted they even have the same surname as the father something about it is just malicious and deliberate as if she's trying to replace my daughter for them both. i agree there's yeah. There's just no way. For them both to spring it up like that at the first meeting. No, of that was weird. Literal all the names on the universe. She's trying to bury that daughter. All the names. All of the names. You quite literally had unlimited options. Am I the asshole for requiring guests change their clothes before they sit on my furniture? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it is a lot. Um, I'm 20 male and I live alone oh, I'm a very no. neat person My mother kept our house pristine growing up And I helped her for as long as I can remember I recently moved out into my own place And something that I started thinking about Is how many germs from outside we track into our houses I always change out of my clothes As soon as I get home But whenever I have guests over they don't 
Also, I have no idea where they've been or what their clothes have been exposed to. About a month ago, I bought a bunch of those clear disposable raincoats and I started telling people who I invited over that they could bring a fresh change of clothes to change into. No way. Or wear one of the coats before they sit on my furniture. <laughs> I also offer to wash the clothes that they change out of if they want to. What? My girlfriend doesn't have a problem with this and started leaving clothes at my place. My mom and little sister have always been okay with this new rule. But I invited a friend over yesterday. I told them about the clothes thing before they came. And when they got here, they were surprised that I actually enforced it. And they said, you gotta be effing kidding me. I told them, no, I'm serious. And then they left. They haven't <laughs> been answering my messages either. Aww. I was talking to my mom about it today, and she said it was pretty excessive and unreasonable to expect everybody to do it. I disagree, but I'm kind of double-guessing myself. Am I in the wrong here? I mean, it's your play, so, like, do whatever you want to do. But if you actually want to have people over your house, <laughs> I might lighten up a little bit. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, okay, <laughs> for me personally... I'm, I don't have the biggest social game. Like, I'm not a big goer outer, you know? If I have to pack a day bag just to go over your house and sit on the couch, I'm not going. <laughs> Generally speaking, <laughs> that's the, Wait, no. and the raincoats. <laughs> the raincoats the is crazy. Raincoats. <laughs> Everyone has their own personal raincoats. Your cheeks can touch that. And I, did he say they were clear? <laughs> they were clear. clear. Well, I guess you're not taking your clothes off if you're wearing the raincoats. For some reason in my head, I imagine they take the clothes off and they wear the raincoats. So I'm like, you're naked maybe, underneath the raincoats? No, that'd be good. Maybe. What, what well, do you guys think like, about the plastic like on the furniture? That's what I was just about to say. Because oh, then you could wipe doing, it down. They've been doing that for years. Yeah, my grandma, time. I never knew what that furniture looked like under that plastic wrap. It's like it was always there. It made the couch uncomfortable, but it didn't matter because it was Granny's couch. So therefore, we keeping that plastic on there. Yeah. Maybe he could have done that, but yeah, like Sadie was saying, if you want to keep friends around, maybe just like no, no, pull the old Granny. Just put put the plastic on the furniture. Just be like ah. Because I I don't know. I feel like that's kind of asking a lot for your that's friends to come lot. over. Because everybody has like a different level of cleanliness. So it's like then don't have like you said don't have people over. Yeah. But I I get it if you know you having you're having people sleep in your bed. Yeah. And that I completely people in your get. bedroom. Yeah, I completely but get that. I think the thing is too. I feel like it's a a bigger underlying issue. Like, what is it? Maybe like a a small form of germophobia. Like. If it yeah. starts here in the house, then, like, if he's thinking that much about it at home, I can only imagine that it's just going to keep growing and yeah. he's going to, like, be to the point where it's like, you don't want to go outside. Yeah. Because that's how they can be debilitating, day. you know? Yeah. Like, Everyday life. Because yeah. the world is dirty. Germs are everywhere. Everywhere. There's germs on your body all the time. Man, I took microbiology. I haven't been the same since. There's, oh. there's organisms living on your body. In your eyelashes. In your eyelashes. Just having a party. Woo! They're, they just live on your eyelashes. I mean, they're like mutually beneficial in a way. But yeah, they, they don't do they don't affect you in any way. But they do live. Isn't that weird? It's just kind of weird to know. Yeah. Yeah, it's If weird. you're a germ germ person, you won't you don't want to know that. Because they're constantly living on your body, in your body. They're everywhere. I, um, I, look, when I, at the end of the semester from my microbiology class... I thought I thought the germs were they were they were hunting me down. Yeah. And they were getting me tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> like the amount of germs and just utter contamination of everything is crazy. Because those those uh, white blood organisms. cells be coming in, they're like, listen, the more you're exposed to the germs, the more you can build it up. So you do have a strong immune system when you go out compared to if you were to stay you know, kind of near cleaner space all the time. You need to be in a place that kind of does have germs to a certain extent, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But um, top comment, you're the asshole and need <laughs> therapy. I don't say that disparagingly at all. I sincerely think you would benefit from professional help. 
and somebody said, <laughs> agree. This is extreme and OP needs therapy. So I give a gentle, you're the asshole. But also, wouldn't it be easier to get like a large throw blanket to put over the sofa when guests come over? Which is kind yeah. of what you guys suggested. I feel like that would Any be plastic. so much easier than... I'm coining that. Next comment. Or just the 80s grandma style and cover all the furniture in clear plastic. They, she, they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Skleelop. But maybe that's going to cost extra money like this next story. Oh, excuse me, Maddie. I was going to transition, <laughs> but go ahead. I don't know. That one was just a little... little. Am I the asshole for not wanting to pay the extra money my mother-in-law put for a gift that I didn't ask for? My mother-in-law bought me a new coffee machine. I don't know why, as the one I have is still working fine, but whatever. I accepted. Before leaving, she told me that I needed to pay her $30. I asked why, and she said that she was planning on putting only $50 into the gift, but the cheapest coffee machine she could find was around $80, so I needed to put the $30 she added for the machine. That confused me because... If she planned on only putting a certain amount of money in the gift that I, once again, didn't ask for, then why not give up the coffee machine idea and buy something that's actually $50? She said she didn't care about paying more, and if it if it made me she, happy... She, but th did she pay more? <laughs> I said, well, clearly you do care, otherwise you wouldn't have asked me to pay the extra $30. Exactly. She said it was just a matter of principle, and if I but had... Principle? You barb... And if I had any manners, then I would pay her. She then left. Are you serious, my brother? She texted my husband that she was waiting on the $30 and would take back the coffee machine if I didn't. I told my husband to respond that she could come and take it back because I was not going to give her $30. Thanks. My husband is not okay with that because he's gotten attached to the machine. Oh! <laughs> Whatever then that Then have means. hubby, yeah, hubby, go ahead and fork up the $30. And told me to give her $30. I told husband he if he is. wanted to keep the machine, then he should give his mom the money that she wants. Bright idea. He said that I needed to do it because the gift is originally mine, even though I never asked for it. He said that I was making this harder than it needed to be and was selfish to not pay the extra $30 for the machine his mom got me, especially knowing that he likes it. I have a hard time seeing how I'm wrong, so I'm going to come here because there might be a chance that I am in the wrong. Should I just give his mom the $30 like she asked and be done with it? Keep that wallet closed tight. Oh. What type of money laundering business is going on here? Dude, where is the sense in anybody? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. If you need the $30, just say that. <laughs> First of all, if you don't have the... You, your budget was fifty dollars, right? Right. I have the bright idea. Hey, I'm feeling a little bit nice. Let me go get somebody a gift, and then you get them a gift, but expect cash back. You get them a gift that they don't want, but in that general, with gift didn't even giving, ask for. with gift giving, it's the whole principle of like I'm giving you something that I don't expect anything back for. That's the whole. Gift. I'm giving you a gift. That's a gift. It's not a Facts. loan. It's a gift. I don't want anything back for it. So the fact that she immediately is like, okay, well, I gave you this. And I agreed in my head that I was going to give you $50. It's obviously more than that. So now you owe me 30 That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense, girl. That maths is not my fin babes. It's, it's not, not my fin babes. It's not my fin babes <laughs> at all. What the heck? I don't understand. Um, what was that? Where did that come from? I don't understand. I don't understand. I, I, really I don't. don't. Take it back. Matter of fact, just give me the receipt and I'll do it for you. And then imagine if Claudia's like, no, give her the money. I like it. Yeah. And you're the one that's sipping off the freaking coffee pop. I'm like, Brandon, if that's that was you, crazy. go ahead and pay her $30. Then. <laughs> and he's like, no, because she gave it to you. What? No, that's so the, no so the son no is sense. being crazy, too. They're There's all no crazy. sense in there. There's no. There, the mother and the son. I feel like the more you, this is those type of stories, the more you try to get to close to logical answers is the further you get away from what actually happened. Literally. <laughs> the, there's no logic that can explain what Absolutely just happened. None. There. Absolutely not. It, it's just senselessness running rampant. So top comment, not the asshole. Your mother-in-law and husband want you to pay for a gift you didn't want and didn't need. Don't pay her and tell her why. You didn't want a coffee machine. Your old one is fine. And why should you pay for a gift that you didn't want? 
Tell your husband the same. Another person says, this feels like she's setting a precedent. If OP pays the mother-in-law, she's likely going to get the same treatment again down the road. Go to a fancy restaurant with mm -hmm. a $200 bill. Mother-in-law only wanted to pay $100. you will have to pay the other $100. Good for you to stand up to her. And then somebody else said, right, mother-in-law buys OP a gift that's really for the husband and then expects OP to pay? That is dumb. That is that just don't make no sense, man. Uh, Brandon, you're right. I, I'm trying to find the logic in it, and, it, and I'm just driving myself crazy in the process. You sound like a sports commentator right there. <laughs> Brandon, I'm really hearing you from this side of the court. Um, <laughs> I've actually always been interested <laughs> in sports commentary. They're so good. They're so good. They are literally describing play-by-play play what's happening, and it's like, they do it so fast. Yeah. So yeah. now we have the mother-in-law asking for $30 from the daughter-in-law. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> she said no. Were you expecting that, Sadia? <laughs> nice hand-to-hand -hand But let's go back though. and run this uh, on this replay. Let's watch that again. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And as you can see, he he the, the, the mom is just clearly walking up with all the confidence in the world. Yeah. Wow. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. That's and then and then the son, the son comes in and says, pay, pay, pay my mom. The son backing the mother. What is I this? I, a play I never could have saw coming. But, but if you check right here, look at the bewilderness on her face. She Brandon, looks lost. Face. Brandon, this is something I've never seen before, guys. This is truly this incredible. Is, it was really great talking to all you guys tonight. Yeah, yeah. And tune in next time for the brother-in-law story. Next. See you then. <laughs> That was a good transition. I love that transition. <laughs> this story comes from Comfort Level Pod on Reddit. Reddit. So if you guys want to uh, share your own Reddit. stories and talk about it amongst the community, that is where you do it. R slash Comfort Level Pod. Reddit. Oh. Bull, bull, bull. Am I the asshole for not wanting to have a deep relationship with my brother-in-law? I'm 21 female, and my sister and brother-in-law are in their 30s. Recently, there has been an awareness of my brother-in-law cheating on my sister. Mm. He was sending naked photos to another female and has done this previously. Hmm. Their anniversary, yeah, Their anniversary <laughs> was this week, and this has been going on for a couple of weeks now, and my sister just found out. She still seems to want to be in a relationship with him, but I no longer desire to have a relationship with him. Prior to this, I already did not appreciate the way that he speaks to me, as I feel it's degrading and disrespectful. My boyfriend and I don't feel comfortable being around him. Am I being inconsiderate? My sister asked me not to be angry at him, but I just don't understand why he did this twice now, or at all in general. My heart hurts knowing she'll be with someone who will shatter her heart. I know it's their relationship and her choice to stay with him. So, am I the asshole? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how you not talking to him anymore has any effect on their relationship. Yeah. I mean, it might make it more awkward, but it's his actions that he's done repeatedly. Yeah. And um, I get what you're talking about where you feel bad for your sister because you're like, I know that you might have some blinders on. Yeah. You know, and you might just be like, y you haven't left the relationship yet so yeah no I yeah mean. my own thing is i would make sure that don't let the boyfriend put her out on an island <laughs> uh because yeah like it's tough like th to see that happen and then just to have to watch and knowing what you know but it, there there's could be a chance for redemption but considering the fact that he's done it multiple times it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but just, yeah, just don't make sure that she, she's like completely isolated because when there comes a day when she realizes like, yo, I'm worth more than what he's putting me through. Yeah. It's going to be like, dang, like she's out alone. And then at that point, that's how you kind of become dependent on somebody. It's just like keep going back to him because it's like, well, I don't have anybody else. So just <laughs> show her the love, but don't, make what she's who she's with like yeah yeah i don't know just don't don't like a her. qualifier with her like be, having a relationship with her sister mm -hmm. um i think that i don't think that she's the asshole for not wanting to have a relationship with the brother-in-law um a lot of the time when it comes to like like family at, in relating to family they're like oh this is your family so you know you have to rock with them like what really? i think that very much that there are boundaries and i'm even working 
on that with myself like okay just because they're family don't mean you can act crazy and I feel like especially in the situation that she's in where she's seeing her sister like continuously getting hurt by this dude you come to a point where you're like why why would I want to talk to you because you are you are literally the sole person that is continuously putting my sister someone that I love through this through this knowing that she doesn't deserve it knowing that there's no reason for it to happen and really if you didn't if you wanted to step out and do your own thing just be done because that's what you're doing anyways so I don't think that she's the asshole I think that she's setting boundaries and I think that she's she's sticking up for her sister vicariously Mm because she knows that her sister's not going to do it so I'm like okay you you want to do your thing i i have nothing to say to you i can be cordial to you like i don't have to be rude and disrespectful when i see you but i'm absolutely absolutely not gonna play in your face like i have anything but distaste for you you will get nothing more than neutrality out of me yeah i mean also like what you're saying brandon i don't think there should be any change in the relationship with the sister i think like what you're saying she should just be straight up of like listen i don't like that dude He's disrespectful to you, and that's it. But that shouldn't change your relationship with your sister at all. You know, you need to keep that relationship, whatever it's at, or build it to be a stronger one if you want that to be. But yeah, whenever he's around, you don't have to. You don't have to interact with him. I mean, it make it it make might make it awkward, but who made it awkward in the first place? Mm -hmm. And it's like until you until I see a change in how you treat my sister in the future, like yeah, this is gonna take time. Yeah, you know, you want the best for your sister because that is like. The the bond is, I'm hoping, maybe, probably like that. But it's like, there's no convincing you can do when they have rose-tinted glasses on and they don't see the red flag. Hey, you're constantly being cheated on. There's no there's no convincing that you can do. So just don't. I agree with you, B. I think that. Don't even touch that. Yeah. I think, as to what you said, she, I don't think that she should really should even bring it up to her because it's like, it's such a cycle. I've even been in that cycle. Like I'm the friend that's like has a friend that is constant, like repeatedly cheated on, and it's a cycle of she get she gets cheated on, and then she comes and talks to me about it, and then I talk to her, and then she ends up going back with him, and then he cheats on her again, and it's just round and round and round and round, and <clears throat> really, you kind of end up disappointing yourself. Yeah, I mean, and really, you get to a point where it's like I don't there's nothing left for me to say to you i have said everything about this situation that i could possibly say to you you i can't want it for you i and that's just the truth i can't want it for you when you are really tired when you get really tired that's when you'll be done and until you're really tired you're just gonna be keep you're gonna just be keep being caught up in this crazy cycle and it's like Ugh, you just save yourself so much heartache by just leaving it but being in it it's hard to it's hard to see that because really that's what you know that's mm. what you're used to i was gonna say sometimes if that's all they know it's comfortable yeah. for them so it's yeah. more uncomfortable for them to leave that yeah. situation to just be in solitude rather than being in a relationship yeah so but yeah op i don't think you're the asshole for yeah. not wanting to talk to him um like sadia said you're just setting up your own boundaries for yourself so she do have an opportunity, though. She should hype up the sister. Like, hate and love can't stay in the same area. If you think that this person is genuinely bad for your sister, love on her. Like, you know, show her that she is worth what she's worth. Like, she is worth it. She's not worth what she's going through. If you keep showing her love, eventually that hate, whether it's self-inflicted or if he's doing it to her, it's going to get pushed out eventually because they can't stay in the same space at once. Well, thank you guys for coming on for the Comfortable Podcast. Adia, thank you for being here. Um, maybe replacing Sam because he's not here. So um, I guess we'll see next time who's here. It won't be Sam. Oh. Well, we I all, know. I guess, will see you for the next episode of the Comfort Level Podcast. Are you okay, Brandon? I don't know when we'll see Sam. Brandon, I just want to hit him. I'm I just your cousin. Just, We've talked about this. I, I, I punched Sam. 
And maybe your brother will be back on soon, Sam. Because you guys like, are cousins. Brother? I know. I'm like, Caleb? <laughs> I know. I was like, Caleb? Caleb? <laughs> It really is Caleb, and everyone's you like, know, okay, I thought Sam was coming back. <laughs> Sam's never coming back, guys. Just get it. No, I'm just joking. Sam's got to come back. He's the favorite. He's, yeah, I, and we get that. We understand we that. It. We get it. So Sam will be back, but Sam, Sam and his favorite. frames will be back. And his, uh, we need a, we need Square a, frames. we need a name a posse, or not posse, but like his fan club. Like a fan club. When we find the fan club, we got to find a fan club name just for the people that are in love with Sam. Because there's so many of them. Sam stands. Mm-hmm. Sam Stanleys. I don't know why I'm just thinking the Samanthas. But Sam and the Samanthas. <laughs> yeah. Sam oh and the gosh. Samanthas. Sam and the Samanthas. That's actually kind of cute. <laughs> okay. And as you can see, in all these stories, there were quite some wild turnouts to this yes. event. But as you can see, we are about to end our playoffs. So join us next week at... 12 p.m. as we do these next stories. This is B Gain signing out. Good night, See you guys. Everybody. Good night. See you.